Hello, in this video I will optimise the geometry using a pot of juice and show you a quick way of generating UVs on high poly geometry before exporting the model as an FBX. First of all, these are two separate bits of geometry, so I'm going to combine them together using a remesh grid. And just as I did before, come back to this remesh grid, copy parameter, and on this remesh grid, I'm going to do paste relative reference. And if we just look between these two, we can see where you were losing that color attribute. So on the remesh to grid, I'm going to check transfer surface attributes. And that's now transferred that color attribute to the remeshed geometry. If we just quit between the two, you can see I'm just subtly losing detail, even though I'm remeshing at the same resolution. So what I'll do is on this division size, at the end of this expression, I'm just gonna type asterisk, which is for multiplication, times 0.75. And that would just slightly reduce this division size. A grid size is just slightly smaller than the input uh, resolution. But that will just make sure I don't lose any kind of, uh, of those subtle details. The next thing we're going to do is just uh, reduce the poly count slightly, just to optimize it, and create some UVs. So after this remesh, add a poly reduce. And just turn on wireframe so we can see what this poly reduction is doing. And what I want to do is just optimize the geometry slightly. Um, this is just to make things easier when we're importing geometry, we're dealing with slightly smaller file sizes. That's also saving disk space as well. And you can see we've kind of got this smooth flat area. And so we don't really need this geometry here. So I'm going to reduce the uh, percentage to keep to 50. So we're just reducing the polycane by half. And I will see um, if we're losing uh, too much detail with that. Let's just have a look. I'm happy with that. I think that's uh, accept acceptable. You know, the great thing about Houdini is this is all procedural, so at any point we can come back and adjust this poly count, this uh, percentage to keep, uh, if we feel like we're reducing the poly count too much, and just rerun the network, and we'll have the updated geometry. Now, I want to bake this, uh, this color to a map, so I'm going to need some UVs. And I'm going to demonstrate a very quick way of doing this that I find works very fast when dealing with um, this high resolution geometry. Because if I drop something down like the uh, lab's auto UV and try it with this poly count, with this poly reduce, we'll find that this is going to take um, quite some time to cook. So I left that for a little while, but we're still going, so I've just cancelled it. So. So auto UV and generating UVs in, in this manner, we could tweak these values to get something maybe that's a bit quicker um, and not so uh, detailed, but it, it, it takes too long. So I find a more kind of a bit more of a brute force approach or a bit more of a, a less intelligent approach, which produces UVs uh, much faster. And that's to use the labs connectivity and segmentation node. And so if I apply this, and I'm going to check target bucket size, and then check visualize segments. And we don't see anything now. I think that's because we've already got a color on our geometry. So I'm going to temporarily add an attribute delete. And then we're going to delete the color attributes on the points. And now we can see this connectivity and segmentation node visualized. And we can see it's splitting the geometry into all these different segments. 
I'm going to increase this value currently set to uh, to kind of two k. So I'm going to increase this to eight one nine two. Could try something a bit bigger. One six three eight four for sixteen k. So now I have this geometry split up into these different segments, and I can output this boundary edges group, and I can use that with a UV flatten. And if I disable this uh, visualize segments and on the UV flatten, under the flatten constraints, under the seams field, I'm going to select that segment edges group. And if I just turn off the lighting, you should be able to see it's now using those segments as UV islands. And I can inspect the UVs by hovering the pointer over the viewport and hitting five on the keyboard. Obviously they're all overlapping at the moment, so I'm going to add a UV layout to lay out, to lay out those UV islands. I'm going to press one to switch back to my viewport. And we have a few different options here. I might want to ensure that all the UV islands are scaled to match their surface areas. So if I check that. I'll just make sure that all these UV islands are the correct size. I can increase the island rotation steps. So let's set that to something smaller like uh, 11. And that will just rotate these islands more just to try and pack them uh, closer together. And you can see that's just increased this coverage percent slightly. And so as you can see, compared to the lab's auto UV, this is much faster. As I said, it's not particularly uh, smart or intelligent in terms of the way it applies UVs. It just kind of blanket creates these clusters. And so you that does end with, uh, with some kind of unusual and uh, nasty areas on the UVs. But what I found in practice was you couldn't really see any difference when you saw the geometry displayed in Unreal. So it worked well enough for my needs. There are a few areas where this technique does fall down. So I'm just going to re-enable lighting and then switch on visualize segments again. This technique doesn't quite work so well in some of these corner areas. You get some, some stretching around, uh, around here as it tries to kind of flatten out these curved areas. And I found balancing the size of the bucket size. So if I was to bring this down slightly, we'll end up with more clusters of more UV islands, but less distortion as the clusters cover smaller areas. Let's just reset that target bucket size to 16K, uncheck visualize segments, and delete the attribute delete to get our color attribute back. So now I have my geometry, I've reduced the polycount slightly. I've created some UVs. I now can create some outputs. So first of all, we could have our FBX. So I'm going to add an FBX output. So this will be the FBX that we want to import into Unreal. I'm baking out this color. So I'm not going to store it as a vertex color. So first of all, we can add an attribute delete. So what I want to do is actually delete any unnecessary attributes. And sometimes I find the easiest thing to do is actually just select the attributes that I want to keep. So I want to keep color, I want to keep normal. I can select position as well. I want to keep the UVs on the vertex attributes. And I don't want any of these primitive attributes, name, segment, or tag, and or any of these detail attributes either. So I'm just gonna check delete non-selected. So now essentially we're just keeping the attributes that I've specified. I actually don't want to keep the color attribute either. I want to delete that. So I actually should remove that. So I'm just keeping normal uh, and the UVs. On the ROP FBX, I'm going to check convert units. So Houdini's unit scale, one unit is one meter, whereas one unit in Unreal is one centimeter. So by checking this convert units, when we export the geometry, it will be exported in the Unreal unit scale. So one unit will be one centimeter. 
And let's export this to a folder. I'm just for now, whilst I'm still testing, I'm going to export it using $hip, which will save it uh, in a geometry folder in the same directory as the Houdini file that I'm working with. And for the file name, I'm going to prefix it with SM underscore, which stands for static mesh, which is the naming convention that the Unreal documentation recommends. And then headstone underscore large underscore zero one, which is the name of this particular uh, mesh that I'm dealing with. And if I middle mouse button, you can see that dollar hip variable resolved to the directory to my Houdini file. So I'm going to hit save to disk. And now if we come into uh, the directory where this Houdini file is saved, I have my geometry folder. And then here is the FBX that I've just exported. And in the next video, I will set up a COPS network that I will use to bake out the ID map as well as creating a mask map using convexity, concavity and ambient occlusion.